During a dynamic five days, the Biophysical Society's annual meeting is known for its variety and vitality. From the 500 speakers to career development programs, from interactive presentations to advocacy and education, the 2024 Biophysical Society annual meeting meets all the needs of its members. I think we are living in the most exciting time to be a biophysicist and do biophysics. Welcome back everyone, I'm Atria Godfrey and I'm thrilled to have you joining us on this stimulating second day at BPS 2024. Today, we focus to the endless ways the Biophysical Society works for you. You're watching Biophysical Society TV. First of all, look at your work, see if there is good rigor and reproducibility. The idea is to make sure that your work is reaching the right people. Straight ahead today, we hear from three editors-in-chief of the various BPS publications. Find out what are the hottest trends in research and how you can have your work published. Biophysicists have a multiverse of career opportunities available to them. Plus, we are highlighting how the society is committed to your success and career fulfillment. And we go around the globe. Our tour of the organizations and institutions breaking new ground in the biophysical science arena goes global. We'll profile the international groups blazing new trails. We're packing a punch on this second day and we want to make sure you never miss a minute. You can always find the latest Biophysical Society TV episodes on the TVs placed throughout the convention center, on the in-house channels at several of our partner hotels, on the homepage of the BPS Meeting website and on our Twitter and YouTube pages. We start our second day with the Biophysical Society's commitment to exceptional research and education in the Biophysical Journal. Vasanti Jayaraman is Editor-in-Chief of Biophysical Journal and sits down with us in studio now. Pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me here. We've got the best of 2023 here, an amazing accomplishment. Let's talk a little bit about the Biophysical Journal. What are some of the trends that you're seeing right now when it comes to submissions? So in terms of numbers, for instance, our, uh, the journal is pretty good. It's very stable when it comes to, com when it comes to numbers in terms of the papers that are published. But um, submissions are a little bit uh, low right now. And if you're wondering how this all adds up, mm -hmm. even though submissions are low and you still have enough uh, publications, it's because we, we are getting much better quality uh, papers being submitted. So we have less rapid rejects, which means that most of the papers that are coming to the journal are going out to review. And uh, the whole goal of Biophysical Journal is not to act as a gatekeeper deciding, oh, this, this work is novel or this work is, uh, is jazzy, but rather to improve the quality of the, uh, of the paper by working with the authors and providing them with constructive review. Interesting. So as you are soliciting more work and more research to be published, what are you looking for? So um, really what we're looking for is uh, research that has quantitative insights into biological processes. So it, it spans the whole spectrum, right? All the way from molecular to cellular to systems, even organism level. Mm -hmm. um, so to put it in simple terms, if you're submitting your work and presenting it in, uh, in, at the society meeting, then your work is a, is a good fit for the journal. Okay. Really, the journal is the flagship um, journal for the society members. So it's a forum where the members can submit their work and, uh, and get constructive review from, from researchers in the field. That's a really good litmus test for someone to know, you know, okay, if I can present here, then my work would be you exactly. know, welcome in the journal. Exactly. Um, what would your advice be to somebody who maybe has not submitted their research before, but wants to do so? Basically, what I would suggest is, first of all, look at your work, see if there is good rigor and reproducibility, mm -hmm. and if it's something that the, that the biophysical membership would be interested in. The idea is to make sure that your work is reaching the right people. Okay. So the idea would be for you to look at the editorial board and see, make sure that there are editors who can give you a good review and for your work to reach the people that you want to reach. You know, there are several different journals for the biophysical community. How does the biophysical journal differ from the other ones? So, as I said, again, we have a very large editorial board. These are all editors made up of researchers and, and scientists who are leaders in the field. So, you get to be reviewed by the experts in the field. Okay. So, the whole goal, like I said, is for the authors to get a fair review. And 
fine. We are not going to be very high in the two-year impact factor that people like to be on where the novelty is tested. But uh, it's more about whether it stands the test of time. You will see that the, the papers that are published in biophysical journals are cited for years and years. So the, the lifetime for the uh, citations is significantly longer. Mm -hmm. And that just shows you the quality and, and the rigor and reproducibility of the work that's published in BJ. Wonderful advice. Well, Vasanthi Jayarama, thank you so much. Again, Biophysical Journal, the best of 2023. We've got to stand here at the meeting, so make sure that you pick up your copy today. Thank, thank you for having me here. Turning now to the Freie Universität Berlin, where the theoretical and computational biophysics group uses physics, mathematics, and machine learning to understand biological systems at the molecular level and divine organizing principles for their dynamics and interactions. Let's take a trip to Germany. Biophysics is the application of the tools of physics to explain, understand, and predict biological processes. A lot of the group's efforts have been devoted to designing a so-called transferable coarse grain model, where we would learn these interactions from all atom data on a specific set of proteins, and then build a model that would be able to simulate the thermodynamics of many different proteins that were not used for its parameterization. You can think of it as solving a jigsaw puzzle. Experimental data give us some pieces, and the model sees those pieces and fills the rest of the picture. If we can model biomolecular systems at different resolution, we can in principle predict their behavior, and that allows us to understand also when they don't work. The Biophysical Society's career resources offer everything from expanding your professional development skill set to learning about new careers in biophysics. Let's see how the Career Development Center right here at BPS 24 is helping attendees take their careers to the next level. Biophysicists have a multiverse of career opportunities available to them. We just need to know what they are and we access that by looking at the data about who you are. The Biophysical Society Annual Meeting provides an entire suite of career opportunities within the Career Development Center. So my colleague and I, we are presenting a number of workshops on different aspects of the Career Development Pipeline, everything from creating your dream career and networking for nerds to negotiation, using LinkedIn, interviewing and navigating an international job search. In addition, we are providing free career consultations, and so you can come to the Career Development Center, sign up to meet with us private and confidentially, and talk about whatever career or job question you have. And finally, we have a whole list of career opportunities and jobs that are advertised right here you can take advantage of. We're here to help you advance your career in biophysics. The biggest mistake that biophysicists make when they're trying to further their career and are having challenges with that is undervaluing themselves. And we want to make sure that we market and understand all of that data that creates your profile. This is my first time being here and I'm enjoying it so far. Um, I got a lot of great discussions with professors, students, and also like the career center here. It was really helpful. Um, so they told me like what aspect of my research I should be focusing on on my letter, um, how I should mention my PI and the other things that I did in my university, like the extracurricular activities. Like just to summarize all of this in like one single page paper. So that was really helpful. Turning now to the European Molecular Biology Lab, Grenoble, where their focus is mainly on RNA biology and infection biology. Specifically, EMBL Grenoble researches the structural molecular biology of protein RNA complexes involved in gene expression and host pathogen interactions. The European Molecular Biology Laboratory is an international world-leading molecular life science institution which has several different sites across Europe. EMBL Grenoble is situated in France where we are doing research in uh, structural biology. 
development of instrumentation for research in structural biology and we also provide services to user community. We are part of European Photon and Neutron Science Campus, which is composed of French Institution for Structural Biology, European Synchrotron Radiation Source and Institute of Laue Langevin, which is the neutron source, putting us on the campus together with two most brilliant synchrotron and neutron sources on the planet Earth. This puts us in an excellent position to do cutting-edge structural biology research using complementary facilities and possibilities that this environment offers. Biophysical Report, the newest addition to the BPS family, is open for infinite possibilities. The Editor-in-Chief, Jörg Enderlein, is here in studio with more now on what's trending. Pleasure to have you with us. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. So you've got with you the most recent issue. What can you tell us about what you're seeing as far as hot trends in the research that's being submitted? Yeah, I mean, our journal is, uh, as you said, the newest addition to the Biophysical Society journal family. Mm -hmm. But we are devoting mostly on advances and technical advances in methods and, um, and technology for biophysical research. So the newest, for example, the newest uh, um, issue here, which you see the, the cover, right. is devoted to, for example, studying the impact of light on the fluorescence microscopy, which is often underestimated. So it's a very important issue, but normally not so much uh, paid attention to. Okay. And this, uh, this publication, for example, is studying how, for example, light exposure is, is changing the behavior of cells and tissues, which is a very important topic for, for biophysics research. But in general, the biophysical reports is devoted to new, really advances in technology for biophysics. And I think this is some kind of niche, which is not so well covered by other journals at the moment. And this is an online publication? It's a purely online publication. It's good, open access, so it's fully accessible to, to all readers without any fee. And it is completely then financed by the, by the publication fee of the office. And it's a quarterly publication, but it's constantly being updated. Exactly. As an online journal, it's constantly updated, but we are then grouping the, the different contributions into four issues per year. Okay. And you're also very committed to rapid publication of research as it's exactly. submitted. Exactly. How quickly could someone expect their work to be published? Mm -hmm. so <laughs> ideally, ideally, we ask reviewers to submit their, their reviews within seven days, which is, of course, often quite difficult. So that's the first stage we have to, to, to take, yeah, that wow. how, how fast the reviewers respond. Um, and then the second, the second, how to say, the stage is how fast and the revision is then uh, provided by the, by the authors. But um, besides that, I would say all the, in the intermediate steps are taken very, very quickly. So, for example, from my own experience as editor, um, I'm trying to really to process uh, new submissions the same day they come in. Wow. Um, and then also when the reviews come in directly to uh, transmit them to the authors and also when the revision comes in to, to make a very quick decision so that we have a really, really short time. Uh, from, from submission to, to publication. That's incredible. I guess the benefits of an online publication, you get it immediately published. Exactly. That's amazing. What would your advice be to someone who might be considering submitting their work, but maybe is a little hesitant? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, our journal, I would say, has to focus on, on work, which is not yet uh, providing the big biophysical insight, but which is an, important for doing good biophysics research. So if you have any clever technical idea, which is not yet fully applied to some deep biophysical question, then we are the right journal to publish, because it can be useful for other researchers and to apply. So this is the idea of our journal. All right, open for infinite possibilities. Exactly. Thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Turning now to our Symposium Spotlight Series. The Future of Biophysics Burroughs Welcome Fund Symposium is a major highlight of the annual meeting. Uh, so I'm speaking at the Welcome Burroughs Fund Symposium. Uh, so when we think about membrane protein biophysics, we mainly think about the protein part. But we forget that the surrounding membrane environment actually is not a mere passive bystander. It plays actually a critical active role in organization and function of the membrane proteins. So my lab focuses on developing next generation technologies to study membrane proteins in their native environment. And we apply these technologies to questions related to pancreatic cancer, 
psychiatric disorders and pain perception. And these will be some of the topics that I'm going to talk about today. It's like opening up an analog watch. Uh, where you can see all these gears and the moving parts uh, that are kind of working together to keep precise time, right? Similarly, in cells, tissues, organs, organisms, whichever scale of biology one is interested in, there are moving parts, right? And this could be in cells like proteins, lipids, metabolites, uh, nucleic acids, and so on. It's only a million times more complex than an analog watch. So I think that the future of biophysics hinges on us observing these biological processes, right? Both at the part of the individual moving part level and how they operate together as um, a biological system. And I think this needs to be done with precise spatiotemporal and molecular resolution. And in an ideal case scenario, without perturbing the native environment in which these systems are operating from. I think we are living in the most exciting time to be a biophysicist and do biophysics. This is because with the technical advancements, both from an experimental and computational standpoint, we are now able to ask questions that were intractable even a decade ago. So I think that's lending wings to our imagination. It's making it happen. And I hope that with these newfound uh, insights and discoveries, we will be able to you know, help resolve like devastating clinical problems around the world. I think from my address, the attendees will take away that how important the native membrane environment, native lipids are for membrane protein function. Also, in general, from like looking at the titles of the other speakers in the symposium, there seems to be emerging common theme where uh, they're interrogating biophysical questions in close to native cellular environments. So I think we are moving towards closing the gap between what is in vitro biophysical studies and in cellular or in vivo investigations in the future. At the National University of Singapore, the Mechanobiology Institute explores biological systems from a physical and mechanical perspective at the molecular, cellular, and tissue level. Take a look at how they harness all of their discoveries for clinical innovations, research, and education. We're hoping to make fundamental discoveries about how forces across various lens scales, from the molecular scale to cellular to tissue scale, are generated in biological systems, and how do they also in turn generate signals to instruct cell and tissue functions. So we really believe that mechanobiology research really hold the key, perhaps, for understanding aging and combat age-related diseases. Imaging, especially be able to image live specimens, live cells, live tissues, is absolutely critical. We think that mechanobiology is going to be a major player in our next level of understanding of biological systems and also how to be able to leverage our understanding for treating diseases and to solve other problems related to biological systems. All of the Biophysical Society's publications seek to bring the highest quality work and research to both the biophysical community and beyond, but each in their own specific ways. The editor of The Biophysicist joins us now in studio to explain. Pleasure to have you this morning. Thank you for having me. Let's talk a little bit about the focus of The Biophysicist. You focus more on nurturing education and scholarship. How do you accomplish that? So it's important to remember that as biophysicists, we are all educators, whether we are mentoring undergrads in our labs, whether we are teaching in the classroom, or we are training our grad students and postdocs to achieve their career goals. Uh, there are more structured pedagogical ways of doing this as opposed to an ad hoc way of doing this, and the biophysicist uh, seeks to 
bring together the knowledge that we've all accumulated over the years to do it in a more structured manner and to be able to disseminate it. So that way we don't have to reinvent the wheel mm -hmm. every time we run into education <laughs> challenges. That's our goal is to make education more accessible in biophysics. Wonderful. What are your biggest trends that you're seeing right now when it comes to submissions and also um, the audience interest? So I think our we have a current issue that we are working, a special issue we are working towards right now, which is focused on effective mentoring practices. Uh, we had a webinar on this uh, led by two editors of the journal in November. There was a phenomenal attendance, lots of participation, and that has led to, I think, about 10 plus submissions for the special issue where people are sharing uh, what has worked in terms of effective mentoring practices, including assessments and formal ways of making sure that mentoring is very effective in biophysics. So that's something we are very excited about. Uh, we are looking forward to putting out more special issues in the coming years, so stay tuned for that. Good. You, know, you are a little bit new to this role as editor-in-chief. Um, what is your goal for the biophysicist? So, um, I took on this leadership position um, in July of 2023, so very new. Mm -hmm. um, I um, took it on as more of a service than as a leadership because I, uh, when I interviewed for the position, this, what struck me the most in sort of what I can give back to the community is biophysics, biophysical society is my home, it's my scientific home. I've been coming here for a very long time now, first as a grad student, and uh, my group members joke that this is my biggest party of the year because <laughs> I run into everybody I know. And uh, I wanted to give back, and I was thinking about how many people, whether they were editors or reviewers or letter writers, have served to make uh, my uh, scientific career what it has become and can be, uh, and I wanted to give back. So that is my primary goal here, is service. Uh, my vision for the journal is it become the place where people can turn to, to look for um, articles on excellent education practices, pedagogical practices in the classroom and outside the classroom for all of our biophysics community. And you also have a background in engineering, which brings a very unique perspective to the position. Uh, yes, so uh, I have a very mixed background. Uh, my um, engineering background comes from my master's and my bachelor's, and my um, PhD is actually in biology. I've been all over the place. I'm, uh, I've been a professor of mechanical engineering for 10 years without a single degree in mechanical engineering. <laughs> um, I teach, uh, I don't teach biophysics in the classroom. I, I, my undergrad teaching is primarily engineering. But I think when it comes to preparing your lectures, working with students, there are a lot of common practices. And then there's my course development work is in cell biomechanics. So I've learned a lot to communicate engineering to uh, biologists and biology to engineers. So it's been quite an interesting experience and I hope that will stand us in good stead for the society as I hope to serve them. Well, we're so happy to have you in this role and thank you for your time today, appreciate it. Thank you very much for taking the time. Our thanks to all of our editors today, and with that, we say goodbye. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Biophysical Society TV. If you weren't able to watch or would like to re-watch any interview or segment, you can always find the latest Biophysical TV episodes on the TV's place throughout the Convention Center, on the in-house channels at several of our partner hotels, on the homepage of the BPS Meeting website, and on our Twitter and YouTube pages. Thanks again for tuning in today. We still have one more day of Biophysical Society TV still to come, so we'll see you right back here tomorrow. Have a great one.